Hello and welcome to another Get Good at Business Spotlight. I am your host, Taylor Proctor, your business coach here to help you get good at business so you can get back into the heart of why you got into business in the first place. <laughs> and one of the ways that we do that is through utilizing the I Move method, which stands for intuition, marketing, operations, velocity, and execution. And today I'm so excited to dive into the I Move method as it pertains to her business. Jessica Pennington, welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. So Jessica is a Utah girl who loves to travel and experience new things. She's experienced the best and the worst in people and tries to live every day remembering that there's always something to be thankful and happy about. She's a themed event planner, and she customizes each event towards the person's interest in life, TV, and generation. She also aspires to inspire and support small businesses via networking and community through open houses and grand openings and her very own public events. So Jessica, I am so excited for you to be joining us today. Thank, Thank you for you. Having I really I'm want excited. To, I want to kick oh. things off by asking you what inspired you to become a themed event planner and how has your journey shaped your approach to really creating unforgettable experiences? Uh, starting with the hard questions. Um, so I'm I'm kind of a nerd. <laughs> I'm going to quote or paraphrase uh, Lion King 2. Okay. And there's a phrase in it that says there's a darkness inside of all of us that some cannot escape. Mm -hmm. um, with me, that happened in my teenage years, which as an adult looking back, that sounds insane. Um, but I, my whole life flipped upside down. And I mean, my grandma died, my parents divorced, my sister went away for college. My whole world just kind of shifted and I wasn't sure, you know, mentally how to handle that. Like, how do you, how do you handle that as a teenager who's going through your own growth and hormone changes and stuff? Um, I really struggled. I started to cut and um, I, I really like, Cutting wasn't like a suicidal thing. I didn't want to die at that point. It was just more of like, I couldn't handle the mental pain, but I could control the physical pain. And when I was in physical pain, the mental pain hurt less. Hmm. Um, so I started doing that and my parents never noticed. My friends never commented. Um, so I started to kind of fall deeper into that darkness, I think. And eventually I did plan to commit suicide. Um, I walked home with my best friend, you know, my lifelong friend every single day. And it was always big squishy hugs and he'd, you know, head on his way and, and go straight home after that. Um, I don't know if Landon sensed something. I don't know if he just felt like he needed to, but that day he stayed. Um, I, I had an hour and a half before my mom got home from work and I really, like, I knew that that was it for me and, you know, nobody would notice, nobody would miss me. Um, but like Landon stayed with me and I remember looking at the clock and just being like, okay, 90 minutes, like he'll leave in just a minute. He always does. Okay. Now it's an hour. Like my time is ticking. Why is he still staying here? Like, what is he doing? Um, eventually my mom got home and very shortly after Landon left, um, it really caught me off guard. I couldn't figure out what was going on, you know, how he knew to, to stick around and kind of avoided my mom that night. Just was like, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to go to bed. And I just laid in bed and I remember, sorry, <laughs> I remember just laying there thinking like, how did he know to stay? Like, why did he stay today of all days? Like he always just hugged me and left. Um, to this day, 30 years later, he is still one of my best friends, but I'm not sure that he knows that story. <laughs> oh, It's not something that I talk super openly about, um, but I am pretty open with like my depression and my struggles back then. And even now, you know, as an adult, life is hard and we all struggle in our own ways. So that's the long way of saying um, that I 
I discovered ways to be thankful every day. I did have a journal that my grandma had given me that um, she wrote a little message, you know, make every day count and basically count your blessings type of thing. So I started listing five things every day that I just loved. Even if it was as simple as like, I got up and got dressed. Like some days that's all you need. And so eventually, you know, life moved forward. And um, too many years later, I got a lot of help from a really great therapist and, you know, got my life turned around and better and decided that I wanted to spend my life reminding people that every day is a celebration. Every day that you wake up is worth a happy moment and a good cause. So, yeah. I love that. So (laughs) from earth shattering experience, potentially earth shattering experiences to now creating these events that are celebration of life. I absolutely love that. Thank you. Uh, I, I also feel like this is a, an interesting twist, but it appears that Landon was using his intuition, the very first part of I Move, which has led to you touching countless lives through yes. your business and through events. And I absolutely love that. So as we move to the I Move method, we've definitely heard how Landon's intuition saved your life and allowed you to touch multiple others. But how do you use intuition in your business to really make each event a personalized experience, make it memorable for your clients? Um, So first off, I meet with my customers or potential customers for coffee or, you know, lunch, whatever they prefer, you know, some kind of hangout in a public area. Um, I like to get to know people and, and I want them to get to know me too. The last thing I want is for us to tolerate each other, you know, just talk through email and be like, okay, you're hired. Great. Give me your money. That's not how I am. Um, I want to feel your vibes. I want you to feel mine. Um, so we always sit down, we talk, we get to know each other, make sure that we're a good fit. Um, and then we move forward. Uh, with that, I personalize every event. Um, to the person, to, you know, the way I've gotten to know them, to their requests, to, you know, all the different aspects. So like example wise, 2000s and Harry Potter are like two of my main themes. I'm sure that you can imagine. We all just want to be the same 2000 kids that we were, you know. Um, I did a baby shower last year that was 2000 theme. It was for a surprise baby. So we did, oops, so we did it again. It was Britney (laughs) Spears. I wanted mama to feel amazing that day. So I got her like a custom hoodie that she got to keep, um, had like little photographer paparazzi set up. Um, but then in February I did another two thousands, but it was a birthday and we did like painting nails and like the butterfly clips, the glitter tattoos. So everything is completely different. Same with like the Harry Potter, um, I had a baby shower that was Harry Potter themed a couple years ago, was phenomenal, so much fun, but we focused more on like the owls, the story of the three brothers, but I altered it to sisters because it was three girls at the time. Um, So we did kind of like the fun Diagon Alley restaurants and like um, Honey Duke's candy and all of that stuff. This one that's coming up is for an 11 year old's birthday. And he's very sportsy and very active. And so we're changing it, of course, to fit him because he's not having a baby. He's not a girl. Um, So we are doing like platform nine and three quarters, um, all like the envelopes floating in the air for his acceptance letters. And then just doing like all of Diagon Alley, the Great Hall into the backyard, which is going to have Quidditch set up for the boys to play it. So it's going to be super fun. But basically I just do... um, I make each event towards each person. Um, And then, like I mentioned, the little gifts that people get to keep. I try so hard to get it to be something they love. So like I got the hoodie for my one girl um, for her Britney Spears baby shower. And then I've done like a Pokey One birthday instead of Pokemon. And so I had the original four Pokemon crocheted baby got to pick her first Pokemon, but she got to keep all four of them. So just little details that they would absolutely love and appreciate. Yeah. And so uh, you had mentioned when you're meeting with them, you're having these discussions. So you're checking their vibe, making sure it's a good fit. 
using intuition there, using intuition in terms of, okay, how do we make this customized? And then even again, in ways of how can you make this special and like take away for your client as well? Yes, exactly. I love that. So Thank you. when it comes to the M of iMove marketing, right? Mm -hmm. We'd love for you to share some insights in your marketing strategies, promoting like themed event planning services and how do you engage your potential clients? Um, so as you can imagine, my industry is very much word of mouth. Um, any kind of like reviews and pictures with, you know, tagging my business pages that goes so far. Everybody wants to see that you have done, you know, good events in the past. So right. I can post all I want. Um, in fact, that's part of my marketing right now is I market myself. Um, I am doing like a 75 hard challenge right now, but it's not the workout aspect. It is for 75 hard reels. Mm -hmm. So 75 days of reels. Um, and that's been super fantastic so far. It's just getting me in the habit of keeping my online presence, um, posting every day, being seen in people's feeds, that kind of stuff. That's going to market a lot. As far as full marketing, honestly, surprisingly, networking has done wonders for me. Um, I, I've said that before and people question it because like, how is that marketing? But people are always asking, huh? But oh, networking is. <laughs> oh, for sure. People are always asking on different Facebook groups, you know, who's got this or best hairstylist, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I have networked and made some great friendships in this uh, adventure of mine. And like Emily, I work with a lot. She's usually my caterer for my bigger events. Um, she will tag my page and be like, hey, Jessica's great. Like you would love her. I've got a couple of photographer friends, Rachel and Liz, they do the same thing. And again, that goes back to word of mouth. And even though they've worked with me, but I haven't done something, they've seen me in action. They know what I can do and they feel comfortable referring me. And that's such a huge thing. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think that for like, even us right now, we're online right now, we're virtual <laughs> yes. live, but I often think that business owners, especially when you're creating physical events, yes. physical networking, physical relationships make such a difference. And I think it that really does such a good thing to have found early on. Right. For sure. So obviously running themed and customized events, balancing it with networking and all these other components of event planning and themed parties, what key operational processes or systems have you found to really make sure things run smoothly? Uh, still working on the apps and stuff side of it. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I am fairly old school. I love to just write my own lists, whether it's on the computer or in a notebook. I have all my checklists and it goes from like coming up, you know, when I need to buy to how I plan to set up to my packing list within a couple of days of the event. I always pack early just to make sure um, life happens, mistakes happen. Um, but the best advice for myself and others, I guess, in my position is not letting the customer know <laughs> if you like people tend to panic if they pay for something and then like all of a sudden it goes wrong, even if it's a mild thing. Mm -hmm. I got this. Like, it's so easy. I'm going to step outside real quick and like run to the store and grab batteries. Um, it definitely happens. But for the most part, I feel like my old school checklists are kind of my best friends right now. So <laughs> I love that. There's nothing that can beat being an event planner, having the clipboard and check, 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 check. check. <laughs> Legitimately, that's how it feels. <laughs> so let's move to the V of the iMove method, which stands for velocity. So how okay. do you maintain momentum and drive growth for your business? Um, well, I kind of mentioned the 75 hard challenge, um, doing that, um, keeping myself active and also like I've, I've made it a goal to do two to four long-term next year. I'm hoping for four a year. Um, this year I'm going to do two events that are just open to the community. They're free events. You know, it's on my dime. Um, but I bring in other small business owners and, you know, get them to kind of have vendor booths and feature themselves as well. That way we all have a chance to show what we can do. It's a free event for people to come in. Um, 
they're a little hard to plan for just because free could be 10 people or it could be 200 people. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, like I've looked into doing ticket sales and stuff, not sales, but like $0 tickets, um, just to kind of keep track and plan a little bit better for that. But they've been a lot of fun. Um, we did one back in March for, uh, women, women's month. Um, and then I plan to do one at the end of summer, maybe August or September. So just trying to find that perfect venue. Awesome. I love it. Uh, Thank you. Also, we use events in my company to really boost and get that velocity. So I yes. love the event strategy for velocity. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and also love the idea of the 75 hard reels challenge. I think all of that is incredible. So with those focuses, right, on those events, is that your E for the coming months, aka your thing that you're focusing on, you're executing on, or is there something else? There is definitely something else. Um, I'm going to try not to go in too much detail. I haven't released it fully yet. I um, posted about six weeks ago that I rented Copper Nickel for a big event in December. And I've kind of kept people guessing and I've kind of kept them on the line. And I promise you guys who are watching live, who are watching the replay, it's coming. Uh, we have marketing photos on June 2nd, so this upcoming Sunday. Um, and then about two weeks after that for my birthday, I plan to reveal it gives you six months to plan and save and prepare and do all the things. Um, but it is going to be a huge event. Um, about six weeks after that, I am going to have everything wrapped up in a neat little package and bow and get them sent off to Ryan at connection media co. Um, he's going to help me with actually officially marketing as well as um, Copper Nickel is going to help me market as well. So yeah, oh. super excited for it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So where can our audience find out more, maybe get on the waiting list of that special big uh, event? For where sure. can they find out more about you? Um, so I will have it on my social medias, but you definitely want to get on the email list. They will be first to know. Or, um, you know, go to my website in omniaparatusevents.com. Um, and that will have all of like the teasers and what to expect. And then that is where my tickets are going to be sold. It will save on the fees from other ticketing sites, which in the long run, I feel and have learned that people actually really appreciate. So, yeah, wonderful. So Thank if you, you want to go check out more about Jess, you can check out the link that is in our description of this video as well. It is <laughs> in omniaparatusevents.com. Well, yes. Jess, thank you so much for joining us today for pulling back the curtain on your <laughs> business, what you're doing within the areas of the I Move method to really take your business to those next yes. levels and ultimately get good at business. So definitely thank you so much for joining us today. For those of you watching, make sure to stay tuned. We will have more get good at business highlights and spotlights in the future. But in the meantime, remember that you can get good at business. Thanks.